The law of tort. Private nuisance. The parties to an action in private nuisance are generally neighbors. The courts undertake a balancing exercise between the competing rights of the landowner to use his land as he pleases, and the right of the neighbor not to have his use or enjoyment of land interfered with. A vast range of interferences are capable of amounting to an actionable nuisance. Some examples include, nuisance from flooding, Sedley Denfield v. O. Callahan, nuisance in the form of smells, Wheeler v. J. J. Saunders, a pig farm, encroachment by tree branches or roots, Lemon v. Webb, noise, Kenaway v. Thompson, speedboat racing, cricket balls, Miller v. Jackson, disturbance from a brothel, Thompson Schwab v. Kostarki, some interferences are not capable of giving rise to an actionable nuisance. This includes interference with television reception and interference with a view as seen in Hunter v. Canary Wharf. In order to bring a claim in private nuisance, a claimant must have an interest in the land in which he asserts his enjoyment or use has been unreasonably interfered with. In Malone v. Lasky the claimant was injured while sitting on the toilet. Vibrations from the defendant's land caused the cistern to fall on her. Unfortunately she was unable to claim as she did not have a proprietary interest in the land. There is no such requirement that the defendant has any interest in land, it is generally the person who created the nuisance that is liable. In Thomas v. National Union of Miners, the union were liable for the disturbance created by striking miners even though they did not own the land. A person with ownership rights in the land may be liable in nuisance even where they were not the creator of the nuisance if they have authorized it. In Tetley v. Chitty the council were liable for the noise from the go-karting because they had allowed it. A further way in which an owner or occupier may be liable for the acts of the creator of the nuisance is where they have adopted or continued the nuisance. In Sedley Denfield v. O. Callahan, the council negligently placed a grate in the wrong place on the defendant's land. This caused the land to become flooded which damaged the claimant's land. The defendant was liable for the actions of the council as he had made use of the grate so was taken to have adopted it. The council were liable in Page Motors v. Epsom Borough Council for the nuisance created by the gypsies as the council had the right to remove them but had not done so. An owner or occupier may also be liable for hazards naturally arising. This was seen in Leakey v. National Trust. The claimant's land was damaged when parts of Barrow Mump owned by the National Trust collapsed onto their land. In Holbeck Hall Hotel Limited v Scarborough BC, the claimant's hotel collapsed due to the erosion of the cliff edge owned by the defendant council. The court held the council were not liable as they were only required to do what was reasonable based on their available resources. Private nuisance involves an unreasonable use of land by the defendant which leads to an unreasonable interference with the claimant's use or enjoyment of their land. This requires a balancing exercise of competing rights. In assessing the reasonableness of the use and of the interference, the courts take all the circumstances into account. In particular, the courts will consider 1. The nature of the locality. 2. Duration. 3. Sensitivity. 4. Malice. 5. Public benefit. 1. Locality The reasonableness of the use of land will be assessed with regard to the nature of the locality in deciding whether there exists an actionable nuisance. As Lord Justice Thesiger stated in Sturges v. Bridgman, what would be a nuisance in Belgrave Square would not necessarily be so in Bermondsey. A higher level of disturbance is considered reasonable in an industrial area than would be regarded as reasonable in a residential area. In Hirose Electrical v. Peak Ingredients the smells from the defendant's curry-making ingredients were acceptable on a light industrial unit. The running of a brothel in a respectable residential area was held to constitute a nuisance in Thompson Schwab v. Kostarki. Planning permission may have the effect of changing the nature of the locality. In Gillingham Borough Council v. Medway Docks the granting of planning permission to develop the dockland changed the locality to an industrial area. In Wheeler v. J. J. Saunders the court held that planning permission cannot authorize a nuisance and the defendants were liable for the nuisance created by the pig farm despite the planning permission which had been granted. Where the nuisance results in physical damage as opposed to amenity damage the locality is irrelevant. 
This was seen in St. Helens smelting v tipping, where the smuts from the smelting company damaged the claimant's crops. 2. Duration. Most nuisances consist of a continuing state of affairs. However, an activity which is temporary may constitute a nuisance. In De Keyser's Royal Hotel v Spicer Bros an injunction was granted to prevent building work taking place at night despite the fact the work was only temporary in nature. A single act is capable of amounting to a nuisance as seen in the firework display in Crown River Cruises v Combolton Fireworks. 3. Sensitivity. If the claimant is abnormally sensitive or their use of land is particularly sensitive, the defendant will not be liable, unless the activity would have amounted to a nuisance to a reasonable person using the land in a normal manner. In Robinson v Kilvert the defendant was not liable for the fine sensitive paper and in Network Rail v Morris the use of a recording studio was unusual and sensitive so the interference caused by the train points was not actionable. If however, the claimant has established that the defendant has infringed their right to ordinary enjoyment of the land, they can also claim damages for any damage incurred to unusually sensitive property. In McKinnon Industries v Walker the claimant could claim for the damage to the orchids even though they are extra sensitive as other plants were also damaged. 4. Malice. Where the defendant acts deliberately out of malice, the actions are more likely to be held unreasonable. In Christie v Davy, the singing teacher could claim for the revenge acts of the defendant in banging pots and pans. In Hollywood Silver Fox Farm v Emmett, the firing of gunshots was a deliberate attempt to upset the silver fox breeding and therefore unreasonable. 5. Public benefit in Miller v Jackson, the court took into account the public benefit of the cricket ground. It was held the interference of cricket balls was unreasonable entitling the claimant to damages, but an injunction to prevent future games was refused. Nuisance is subject to the rules on remoteness of damage as established in Cambridge Water v Eastern Counties Leather. It was not foreseeable the drinking water would be contaminated by spills on the factory floor. The wagon mound test applies to determine if damages are too remote. This questions if the damage is of a type that is foreseeable. Remedies for nuisance. The normal remedy for nuisance is an injunction to prevent future interference. Whilst in Miller v Jackson, an injunction was refused, this was criticized in Kenaway v Thompson. It was stated that the defendant should not be able to continue a nuisance by paying damages. Damages are available for any damage to property that has occurred and to compensate for loss of amenity in the use or enjoyment of land. A further remedy is abatement which is a self-help remedy. For example, if tree branches are hanging over your land causing a nuisance you can cut them down. Special defenses applicable to nuisance. Statutory authority. Where a statute authorizes the activity, this will provide a defense. For example, in Allen v Gulf Oil the activity of the defendant in refining oil was authorized by statute so any noise and smell from this was not actionable. Prescription. If the activity has been undertaken on the land for 20 years without objection then the defendant can continue. In Sturges v Bridgman the defendant operated a noisy pestle and mortar and had done so for over 20 years. They had no neighboring property so there were no complaints as to its use. The claimant then built a consulting room next door. The court held there was no prescription right. In summary, Nuisance is where there is an unreasonable use of the defendant's land causing an unreasonable interference with the claimant's use and enjoyment of their land. The courts balance the interests of the two parties taking into account the locality, duration, sensitivity, malice and public benefit. The remedies include an injunction, damages or an abatement. Defenses include statutory authority or prescription. This video is part of a series of videos on law from www.e-lawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at e-lawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.e-lorevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.